Hey guys, this is How to Get Away with Murder, Season 6, Episode 5. I know it is a little later. I usually do it right after I watch it, but I did not get a chance to watch the episode until I got home from work today. So, sorry, but here you go. Um, this one is called We're All Gonna Die. So, it starts out with... Um, Annalise listening to the tapes, the Sam and her tapes, and she was just like mad. Like I was disgusted. I was just upset to hear Annalise just throw herself at Sam. I mean, it's one thing to say that he went after you, because man, dad, he can't take up for himself anyway. But Vivian had them tapes and receipts. Like, no, bitch, you came for my husband, and you were thirsty. I mean, nobody can come and ruin your home. Like. Yeah, she was going hard at him, but that man had already had these feelings and Annalise could tell. She could read, you know, what he was giving off. And, but she was just, that was like so grimy. But I mean, it was just, I mean, the timeline is she's supposed to be like, what, young, pretty young when this was going on, when she got with Sam or whatnot, like in her 20s. Had to have been like pretty young, like 20s, late 20s. I don't know. But yeah, so it's, I was just upset. Just listen. I'm sorry. I was, just, like, I was upset listening to her come for him like that, like Thadarati, like girl. And then I guess the way the tape sounded like, she was like, Tell me you want me, tell you want. She's like, I want every part of you and all this. So I'm like, Did y'all just start fucking right then? Like, he ain't got no appointment after this. <laughs> like, what the fuck? So I was like, wow, okay, Annalise, this is how you get down? All right, cool. So from there, um, because she's talking to Gabriel. Or, well, no, she's not talking to Gabriel. Um, she's thinking about all this shit. Because at first she was holding the, the the recorder in her hand. I thought she had some liquor. I was like, Annalise, no, you just went to rehab, girl. You wasted people money. But no, nah, she was just listening to the same. So from there, she gets the call about Frank because y'all know that uh, Xavier, uh, what's her name? Laurel's brother had Frank and shit. And the way it ended last week was, you know, we didn't see Frank at all last week. Cause that's why I just ran I'm like, wait, where the hell is Frank? Cause the episode before that, we saw that, uh, Laurel's brother walks up on him and I'm like, oh, this shit ain't gonna be good. And then he shows up at Bonnie's door or his door too all bloodied and battered and bruised and fucked up. So she's rushing to the um, hospital. Frank just all uh, jacked up, coughing and just just internal bleeding, coughing up blood. And then he is just, oh, Frank. And it's just like, God damn, is he going to make it? So we just like, is he going to make it the whole episode? So from there, uh. Yeah, because it flashes to what happened and how he, uh, you know, Xavier and he, they were talking and he was like, he followed Frank there. So I was like, damn, you don't know where Laurel at either? Like, this bitch is, she, when she go ghost on motherfucker, she go ghost. How she leave? Like, and she got a little brown baby with her. Like, she ain't, like, she has a child. So this child needs to get, go to doctor. It's a baby. So this baby needs to be like, I don't know. It's like, you can't just like run off with a child and, and have proper care for it. And she not noticed with this little biracial baby. Like, <laughs> okay, whatever. For the sake of the show. So anyway, um, so don't, at this point, we figure out, don't nobody, don't nobody know where Laurel at. Her brother don't know, her daddy don't know, Frank don't know, and Supposedly, no nobody else know either. So this is what's going on. So okay, Laurel, you get the award for going ghost, um, the best at going ghost. So from there, Michaela, we jump. I'm sorry if this is not super in order because I have my notes are all over the place. Michaela, you know, we left off. She talks to her dad, but her dad, um, they didn't really get into the conversation that that good because he has to go off, but. It turns out that she was just conceived from a, a, what he says is a one night stand. And she's like, oh, but why didn't you ever check up? And he's like, well, I did try to check up on you. And then blah, blah. He never really 
by the time he found her and the adoption and all this, he told her that she was in fucking high school and she was on her way to Yale. But she didn't go to Yale, though, because that's not where they at. But she was like, all right, he just didn't want to interrupt her future and her stuff. So he just let her be. But he did say that he reached out to Annalise and um, asked her to look out for Michaela. So I'm like, okay, so you do know Solomon Annalise. Annalise be lying, yo. Like, not that she got to tell these kids all her business, everybody she know, everything. But that's that girl father. And you knew that was her father. And I mean, Michaela just took it upon herself to think that, that other man was her father. But I mean, damn, like, I don't like, I guess he kept, she kept that secret and Annalise kept that in the pocket just so she could use it later for financial gain. I don't know, whatever. So from there, uh, uh, we jump back to, oh yeah, then randomly on the threesome tip with, uh, Oliver and, um, uh, Connor, you know, and then the little, Carmel drop a boy, boy toy that they had. It jumps to them, and I think he made them breakfast or something. And Oliver is just too hype, like, "Ooh, can we keep him?" I'm like, mm, "Kinda, you better watch it. You let somebody come in your bedroom. Maybe he got something better out to, up in there to offer than you do. Um, be careful who you invite into your bedroom. Just be careful about hey." So I don't know what's gonna come of that, but hopefully, dude ain't crazy either. So. It's not that big and important, but whatever. So from there, um, we see, you know, Tegan, um, poor Tegan. But anyway, like, let me get to it when it gets gotten to. Um, Tegan, she's, uh, you know, calls up her wife, Cora. And Cora comes in. I'm thinking she's going to be bad, y'all. I'm thinking she's going to be like, ooh, too sexy. She looked like the she like an extra from the L word and shit. Like that's what she looked like. She wasn't nothing spectacular or nothing. It's just like Tegan, you a bad bitch and you got this this is what you but that's how I be feeling about a lot of people. I'll be like, damn, they bad and they this, they that. And then you see their other half and you be like, what the fuck happened? What? It's just not you not matching my fly right now. So it happens. Whatever. But yeah. So, um, Tegan was talking, you know, trying to go through the stuff with Cora, her wife, or soon to be ex wife, or whatnot. And t- f- comes to find out that um, she's not even with the dude that she left uh, Tegan for in the first place, Patrick, or whatnot. But, you know, she's just still been trying to, she just didn't tell Tegan that. So now Tegan's like, well, what the fuck? Why did she's like, I know you don't think that I would. Um, that I would um, try to get back with you or something. Like, you know, Tegan always got to have the heart, keep the heart, you know, strong black woman, Latina, whatever, <laughs> uh, alive. And can't just let a guard down right then. And I was like, Mm-mm. but anyway, but she said she had been broken up with homeboy, whatever she, she was with for like six months. And I'm like, oh, well, she, I mean, if that girl wanted you back, girl, she would have came back or something to say something, send a text like, hey, what's up? How you doing? She ain't said nothing to you, but shit about this divorce so anyway that tells you a lot Tegan read the signs read the signs homegirl but anyway from there we see Michaela and her dad they going over and he says that you know he wants to talk to her and everything about his future business partner so you know Solomon is her father's name from last episode he was talking about how um he wanted to invest in women and entrepreneurs and all that and put like millions and millions of dollars into small different small businesses you know and get you know get his money back from that but you know so he wants Michaela to pick the first business that he starts with and she was like he said he was willing to give her two percent and then Michaela was like me once she can he was like I don't know what you like because he can't she can't see his room He's like, I don't know what you like, but I just ordered the whole menu. And then she's like, me fat. But she's like, well, I don't want to waste no food. She went <laughs> in the start, grabbed the plate, start getting food. Like, girl, don't let that food go to waste. But yeah. So um, he was saying that he was going to give her 2%. And then she was like, what she say at first? Like 50. Like she went hard at first because, you know, you got to go high because you're trying to get them to meet you somewhere up in here. But then he 
eventually was like they were going back and forth on numbers. So you see where Michaela gets it from, like that business and that shark like mentality. I don't know how her mama was, but you can see that this is that's pretty much daddy's girl. She got it in and she got it honest, at least <laughs> how she is. Um, so they ended up agreeing on because she was like, four, I want four percent. He was like, anything over the, uh three percent or something would be extortion. She's like, I want four percent. And if not, then I'm gonna grab these macaroons because she was about that food. I'm gonna grab these macaroons and I'm gonna go ahead and be about your life again, homie. So there, but all while they were doing all this talking, his little Becky assistant was like, Oh, you got this, you got this, you got this. I'm like, girl, you see that he um talking to his daughter that he long lost daughter he ain't seen in forever. Shout out Becky. Damn, let them have some daddy daughter time. Shit. But I mean, that's on him too. He should have navigated that better. Like, I want to be with my daughter and like just put some shit on pause for five minutes. God damn. You don't even know this girl. You don't even want to just get some time and you, all you want to do is talk business. Like, just the girl wants a father, a family. She's never had that. She's raised by them poor white people to, and and trailer trashy ass people and who just did a wrong and bogus. And then now you sitting here and just being so business. The girl probably just want a hug. Like, <laughs> Dang, but anyway, let me just get off of that. So from there, Annalise, um, so he agrees to um, go ahead and get that, uh, the 4% with her. Then Annalise, because she was calling all of them to the house that they all meet up, you know, where the, most of the roommates live and telling them about, um, but, and, you know, Michaela can't come. She like affiliate shit, but everybody else come. Then Oliver discloses that he knew about Frank finding Laurel or uh, whatnot and gave him the information on the cab driver. The cab driver didn't know where Laurel was, which we found out, of course, was a lie. He knew and um, all this other shit. So now he like, I don't want to tell because I want, um, you know, y'all be, I wanted to keep Frank's secret. He's like, you just stupid and you almost cost Frank his life for not telling nobody, blah, blah, blah. You know, Annalise, you know, she was always calling them dumb ass kids. But yeah. So, um, as the flashbacks, because we constantly see flashbacks of what really happened with the whole Xavier and Frank situation. Like, he thought that he was going, like, get away from Xavier, but Xavier tased that ass as soon as he tried to walk away smugly, tased him, got him tied up, then electrocuted this man. I thought they was going to hook it to his testicles or something. I don't know. My brain be going to horrible places, but they electrocuted him. I don't know where. And um, they was beating him with a bat. Dude, big homie looked like he was real thirsty. They just beat on Frank. You don't even know that man. So yeah. Um, and then um, the doctor was telling them, like, y'all just need to be prepared because if she shows that he has been electrocuted, that can mess up his motor skills. He might not be able to perform or, or at his normal rate, and it could at least a paralysis, all types of shit, and shock your system up. You don't know, you know, so they just told them to be prepared because that's the only family they got. So they, if Frank just all fucked up, then we don't know if Frank can walk after this. We just don't know. So then, um, you know, Gabriel is still calling Michaela because he don't know what's going on with her. He's like, oh, you said you weren't going to ghost me and whatnot. We promised we wouldn't ghost each other. We'd be real, keep it grown, keep it sexy. You need to get back to me because we said we wouldn't do that to each other. Like, he is really hooked on some Michaela, though. Oh, and then I forgot to mention um, Ashley family uh, dilemma. You know, I forgot because it's been so many seasons ago. It feels like when Asher got accused, him and his friends or whatever, of that gang rape of some girl or whatnot, and then his mother disowned him and all that shit. Then the father had his shit and everything. Um, and the father it was all corrupt and then committed suicide. And the reason why his sister Chloe came is because she was like, "Mom, you know, they all lost, they lost all their money, and that's one thing you can do to a rich white person and get them to go crazy." Because, you know, black people, we used to not having a lot, not, much of nothing. But you take a white person money, <laughs> boy, lose their whole mind. She's talking about some mama suicidal. She don't know what to do. She just said she can't go on. She's just a mess. Ashley, just please come back. We're your family. He was like, no, nah, I, when I needed you the most, you were not there for me with the whole dad thing and everything. Y'all turned y'all back on me. So, no, I found somebody, some other people who I consider family now. Because when I needed you, you were not there for me. So don't be trying to come when you need me 
it don't work like that that way, sister. So whatever. And um, then McKay, then it jumps again to I'm sorry if this ain't in order, but this is what happened in the episode. Excuse me for the order. Um, it's somewhat in order. Uh, um, so then we get to uh, what? Michaela again back with her father. So they're still discussing and talking about shit. And again, like she couldn't get like two minutes in with this man without him having a business call or this or that. And, you know, she got to get back to, you know, her Keating Five, you know, family and stuff. And she was like, she was um, saying, like, you know, all I can do is believe what you say. My mother is not here to tell me what actually happened. He was like, well, why would I lie to you? She's like, well, because you may not want me to think of you as a bad person. So he was like, well, what can I do to make you trust me or whatever? Again, like, I just want to, you know, make this up to you. And then she was like, well, just give me money. And then um, she he goes um, to go write her a check. So I was like, boom, right there. He was, that just showed you that he really didn't want to give, that was kind of fucked up because that kind of showed you that he didn't really want to give much of his time, but he is quick to write a check. Niggas don't never want to spend on time with nobody. A lot of time, just spend some time with your kids. Goddamn. Like, <laughs> they want your time, not your money. They need a hug. But anyway, so he goes to sit down and write her a blank check, a check or whatever. And then she was like, um, whatever so she was like don't think that this is the first this is the this is the first of many installments but homeboy handed her up she's like i because i know your net worth and then homeboy handed her a blank check signed and delivered i'm yours so i was like oh okay daddy really doing i'm just about to hand me a blank check bam now i'm just saying fuck love <laughs> I, was like, I don't need no hugs no i'm just saying but yeah so he pretty much just gave it to her and she just was kind of a little shook after that. Like, damn, okay. So from there, because um, she was like, don't forget, you left me with swamp white people and, and I was abandoned and blah, blah, blah. Just laid it on thick. Like, so what do you think I should be getting? But he just gave her, have whatever you want, girl. So back to... Um, So after, oh, so Tegan shows up at Annalise's door um, with some flowers, but they were from Roberto or something. Uh, the douchey one uh, with the Inferno fake tender um, app was asking for a second date. She was like, shit, I forgot about homeboy because so much shit has happened between her and that little date. And now, so she was like, oh, girl, was it good? Did you get some? I'm like, dang, Tegan, you need to get you some. I'm like, don't be letting you got the coochie cobwebs clear it out girl like go ahead and get you some like you can tell she can really need some and she was like drunk when she came over there she's like i took some shots before i came over because i know i want to get about your sobriety and then i don't want to you know be offensive and be drinking in front of her which was very considerate but you're still drunk as hell don't nobody want to be around no drunk pe people except for other drunk people so <laughs> Yeah, and um, they had a little moment, her and T. Oh, and then I forgot. Let me backtrack for two seconds. Bonnie was telling, um, when they were in the hospital, uh, Bonnie, Annalise, and Nate, she was like, uh, when are you going to tell Annalise uh, that about the whole thing with um, the FBI and the, um, and the deal about Annalise and the fact that uh, you still think that uh tegan is working with the castillos or at least jorge i don't know so that happened so you know she shows up and so jump back to annalise and annalise's apartment with tegan and i don't know she was just like annalise i just just i she admires her and all this and she was just like i'm just so happy to know you as a person you're honest and you give you know even though you're she's like my life ain't perfect like, i know it's not perfect and despite all that you still you know a real one and everything and then i thought they was gonna kiss or something i was like yeah but then they did and i was like boo <laughs> but, um, i was like okay i guess y'all just gonna keep pussyfooting around uh the little mm, whatever tegan girl you know you want you some but then she was really more so but i mean it wouldn't have been a good time because she admits to annalise like the reason why she's so shook and fucked up is because after seeing her wife cora or whatnot and talking about the divorce and shit 
she realizes that through all of this, she still has feelings for this woman. Like she still cares about her. And then she's like, well, and it's like, well, that's a good thing. Cause at least, you know, you still alive. You got feelings or whatnot. And so Paul Tegan, I mean, I don't know why they relationship ended, but I'm like, dang. Uh, <clears throat> so from there, the next day go down. Oh, the quote that really hit was when Tegan was like, <laughs> when she was like, if you're going to be with a man, it better be worth it. Yes, because men can be a fucking headache. Anyway, it's like, girl, just get you some, some yeah. <laughs> just, that's all I'm going to say about that. Anyway, so from there, um, Annalise and Gabriel are talking and she was just trying to explain herself to Gabriel that, you know, Sam was always a picture of what she thought she wanted. Growing up, she thought she wanted this life and he was acceptable, I guess, because he was white collar, he was white. And she just always wanted to fit in. And he seemed like, you know, a kind smile. He, he was somebody who fit in and that's all she ever wanted. She never was the person who felt like she fit in anywhere. Um so yes, she threw herself at him. She was young, not, not that much older, around the same age as Gabriel when this shit happened with her and Sam. So she um, she was going back and saying to herself, like, she should have been true about her sexuality. She should have stayed with Eve because she was afraid to be gay. She was afraid of her sexuality. She was afraid how she would be judged and whatnot. She just, you know, she from deep south and shit like that shit ain't acceptable, even to this day. Like, it's just hard. It's just really hard. And if you can just cope and just get with a dude and just go through the plays and have a family and do what is acceptable and what society wants you to do, it's easier to do that than to go through the trials and tribulations of a black gay woman or any homosexuality or whatever like it's just hard so i understand where she's coming from because a lot of people take that path and they just say well this is a more comfortable path i i got enough struggles and shit against me why add on to it you know so i get it but i mean still girl you could have got you a whole man who was not married you could have got a whole other nigga who was not married, who fit those same descriptions. So I'm like, you saying these excuses, but you could have got with somebody else. This man was married. But anyway, I digress. So from there, um, then jump back again to Tegan's little uh, divorce uh, talkings. And uh, Cora came back and talked to her and whatnot. And she was just honest um tegan was honest and saying that she realized that she still missed her and all this and it's just fucked up that she still missed her after all this time but cora she kind of took me back oh she was like she don't miss her not at all she was like she had been falling out of love with her i'm like see that's what's fucked up she was like because she told her before that she did have uh feelings for this patrick before they even she, before she even left Tegan. So she had been checked out of the relationship. But now my whole thing is just be fucking honest. No matter what, like, that's, like, if you ain't honest and then you just fucking putting your whole relationship through a whirlwind because you can't just tell the fucking truth. And it just causes more problems <laughs> in the long run. And then she tells Tegan that she been out of love with her and she, even before all this shit, like, before Patrick, she'd been out of love with her. She should have said something then, like... Why are you going to sit there? Like, I don't know what happened in their relationship. They're not really, I don't even know why they threw this part in, but maybe we'll find out because of what happens at later in the episode. Um, because uh, for, uh, Nate mentions to Bonnie, like, oh, her Tegan's uh, ex-wife, because she works for Homeland Security or whatnot. And she's like, she's um, in town or whatnot. Um, so, you know, they finally get everything discussed sign the paper so boom the divorce is, is solid and then she go reach and try to get Tegan a hug and she was like Tegan was like no nah, I'm cool I'm cool you know then as soon as she go in that elevator close and she leaves CNG whoo Tegan fell on that floor and just started like the pain whoo like this is like that's some hurtful shit somebody you was married to and all that tell you that they don't love you no more and they just been out of love with you since, since way before and any type of glimpse of hope. She said that shit with a straight motherfucking face. I was like, damn, she cold. I was like, fuck. 
I'd have been hurt in the mug too. But that's what you do. You you stay strong, Tegan. So don't let that bitch see you cry. <laughs> like, don't let her see you cry. It's cool, girl. It's cool. It's going to be all right. She just need a hug. She'll be all right. But yeah, I'm like, what if the elevator would have opened back up? Like, oh, girl. No. <laughs> but anyway, so that was it with Tegan. Poor Tegan. Sorry, Tegan, girl. You can do better. You can do better. You a boss, okay? Do better. We know better, you do better. Now you know better, so do better. Don't get with Annalise, though, because shit, she is the best. And at least just all fucked up. So anyway, so from there, um, when uh, Frank was finally woke up a little bit, he well, he the surgery and stuff, he had said Laurel. And then Frank actually ended up waking up, waking up. And he said, he tells Bonnie that Laurel is the one that helps, no, that Annalise is the one that helped Laurel get, um, disappear so i was like what the fuck i was like i don't think so because the way they showed it it was like her and laurel and the ba- they was all chill walking and then all of a sudden laura in the street i mean she's walking with annalise and then all of a sudden she fucking vanishes so if annalise was a part of that that shit just didn't sound right didn't add up so and then she was saying that the money that that she uh then it flashes to xavier telling frank this shit because of the money that um annalise has on some other uh, offshore or whatever account that she got like over what two hundred thousand dollars in because Bonnie was like, well, where did you get all that money from? And then she was like, I got it from CNG. They gave me a bonus. She's like, I'm like, damn, I like at least got to run by all her financials, every dick she sucked, every push she licked, everything. Y'all act like she got to run everything by y'all and tell y'all everything. No, she does not. Damn. So, I mean, if it's pertaining to what y'all situation, but dang, y'all be up in this woman's business, business all day. And then she was like, he was like, Annalise was like, are you too that stupid to believe that shit? Like, I would not, because Annalise loved Christopher and she was so attached to that baby. So I don't think that she would have just let Laurel convince her to leave and let her pay her off like Annalise ain't never been one for the money she was in that techie ass hotel and everything when she lost the house with Sam and stuff so I don't feel like that didn't add uh, add up to me but anyway we'll find out everything soon enough so it jumps to um because uh yeah and then like um it was a moment with Bonnie and uh, uh, Frank, and he was like, Bonnie, you were right when it came to, like, the whole thing of me falling for Laurel. And I wish I still didn't get, like, he was a mad stone killer. You fall for this little bitch. But anyway, you just can't help who you love. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, she he was like, Bonnie, you've always been the one that's been there for me. Like, I love you, like. I love you so much, body. And I'm like, oh, so y'all gonna try to make fetch happen with, with y'all because y'all both hurt wounded birds. We'll see how that works. But anyway, so from there, um, Annalise, after that whole conversation with Bonnie, she goes and she calls up for her account um, or whatever, about, uh, Echo, Bravo, blah, 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 telling her account information. And it says that she only got like $2 left in that account that had over 200 k in it. And she was like, what the fuck? And it says that the it was withdrawn, I think, that morning. So who the fuck took all her money? <laughs> like, yo. So Anna, let me find out Annalise broke again. But anyway, so she ends up calling uh, Solomon, Michaela's father. And she was like, hey, it's time for you to pay up. So I'm wondering, like, did she promise him that she wouldn't tell that he wouldn't tell that she wouldn't tell Michaela about him in order to for money or like what's why does he owe her money I'm thinking like that she when he contacted her before that she was like oh I'll keep your secret but you gotta you're gonna have to pay me or something maybe that's the reason I don't know and then from there um Asher finally goes home to check on his mama she look a hot hot ass mess you can see that everything is just the whole house just look i guess they still got their house at least you still got your house shit sell that motherfucker and keep the money and get go into a small get you a small little place live at your means especially if like she ain't got no job but she's just sitting around crying and watching movies and shit all day and apparently the daughter don't got shit so i don't know y'all so from there um 
Michaela went knock, knock, knocking on Asher's door trying to figure out, but you know, Gabriel lived right next door, so she got to be real you know, quiet when she tried to go and visit Asher because, well, that's why you don't fuck people who live so closely together. You like your ex-boyfriend and your new boyfriend, girl, it's messy. So, um, yeah, and it was like this whole thing when um, Asher's sister came in, it was like, oh, and she followed Asher to the house or whatnot and was like, oh, are these the people you say are supposed to be your family? And what what's uh, Asher's middle name? What's this and what's that? And then Michaela checked her ass because, you know, Michaela, she is good about being a little miss know-it-all. She checked her with all the facts on Asher and so her, and then uh, homegirl Chloe, she backed down. She was like, okay, I need to leave. Like, yes, you do need to leave. Don't be coming up at other people's house trying to act big and bad girl. Bye. So that's what it was. But anyway... So while she was sitting there trying to um, check on Asher, um, and she was talking to uh, Connor too about how you know who would have been there for her, Asher like, girl, you had Asher. Apparently, Asher just wasn't doing it for you. You had Asher, so don't get mad now and get sad when shit ain't working out with you and other homeboy. But Gabriel ended up um, seeing her. I'm like, damn, like. He must have just been anybody he heard in the hallway. He's just trying to see if it's Michaela or somebody. So he popped up out his uh, apartment. I mean, his apartment is small. And he was like, Michaela, I've been trying to contact you. And she was like, yeah. Um, he's like, well, can you, you know, well, she's just like, I don't want to admit that you were right. And then he was like, well, can we just please get over this? I miss you. And I'm like, dang, he was really kind of strung on that thing already. But girl, if you got some good stuff, I guess. <laughs> That's how it be. That's how it be. But yeah. Um, so they all hugging and like, I guess they cool now, her and uh, Gabriel. So then the final scene is fast forward to Tegan and, you know, whoever's got murdered. I thought they was going to pan over to who actually did because I still feel some type of way as Annalise really did. Like, I, that's how I feel. I'm just like, is she really dead? But Tegan's walking up to the through the hallway and saying that her she her client and like I'm representing whoever is supposed to be uh on trial I guess for this murder of whoever's dead and she was like well where's the body and y'all sitting here probably tampering with evidence and all this other stuff so I'm like who the fuck is dead so I am just like so confused because Tegan's representing who I don't my whole thing is I don't think it's um. Annalise being dead because if she's so close to Tegan, like she say, or the way it's being portrayed, like why would she represent anybody who was suspected of hurting or killing Annalise? So y'all, I don't know. If I miss something, put it down below. Sorry this late, but you know, it's a good episode, y'all. But you know, in Shonda Land, you always left with a million and one questions before you even start the episode and a million and one after. So I will see y'all later. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good weekend. I'll probably see y'all. I'm going to be uploading all weekend. So I'll see y'all soon. Bye.